Hey guys, over the course of the last couple of weeks, I had a few friends call me up and ask me on my recommendations on upgrading their home office setup. So I figured if there is ever a good time to make such a video, it is now. Okay, a few months ago would have been an even better time, but hey, I did not have my channel back then. Anyways, I figured I'd make this video and share some of my thoughts on upgrading your home office. Now, of course, the upgrade will definitely depend on how much money you'd like to spend and in some cases on how much space you have as well. So the way I'm looking at it is through different upgrade levels that take into account what I think is the marginal benefit of that upgrade and of course keeping in mind the cost. So let's get started. So if you ask me if I were to recommend only one thing to get, I would have to say a second monitor. Personally, I found working on a single monitor, especially if it's a laptop, too cumbersome and inefficient. And you might have noticed in the background behind me at least three monitors visible. The benefits of a second monitor, in my opinion, of course, are many. And if you're not used to working with a second monitor, you'll find that introducing one to your setup could potentially skyrocket your efficiency. Think email on one screen, Word document on the other, two Excel sheets, one on each screen, or writing an email on one screen and watching a YouTube video on the other. The options are endless, but whichever way you use it, having a second monitor is just great. But a monitor requires space, and sometimes you just don't have that space. Say if you're sharing a desk with a partner, or if you have a very small desk. Well then, you might want to consider getting a monitor mount or a swivel arm. This clamps to your desk and gives you back all the space you lost with the monitor stand. Another advantage, you can swivel it left, swivel it right, or swivel it out, out of the way. But then, what if you don't even have a dedicated desk, and you've converted your kitchen table to a working desk, which you better clear out before dinner? Well, don't despair, you can still enjoy watching Tom and Jerry while replying to your boss's email, and here's where a portable monitor comes to the rescue. A portable monitor is, well, you might have guessed, a monitor that is portable. And there's a ton of models out there, but one of my favorite is this little guy over here. This is the Asus, or Asus. It's a Taiwanese name, and I have no idea how to pronounce it, but this is the ASUS. MB16ACE. There's actually several models in this lineup. It's quite confusing. They look virtually the same and have just a few minor differences, but that's not the point. I love the screen because A, it's quite portable. It's very sleek, has an aluminum back, very thin and lightweight. B, it is USB powered, so it does not need any external power source. If your computer has a USB-C port, then great, you just plug it in and off you go. What if my computer does not have a USB-C port, you may ask? Well, worry not, because it comes with a USB-C to USB-A converter, and you plug it in and off you go. Well, okay, you might need to install a driver, but once you do that, you plug it in and off you go. The third reason why I like it is because it comes with a nice protective cover, which is great if you want to transport it, but spoiler alert, it also converts to a stand. Fourth reason is this hole. Let's say you've traveled, forgot the case. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, guess who's digging you out of that hole? This hole over here. Believe it or not, this hole is so you can put in any pen or pencil and use that as a stand. Psh, genius. Okay, where were we? Fifth reason. It has auto-rotate. Although the auto part of that does not work on Macs, you can still rotate the screen, but you have to do it manually. But on Windows, if you flip the screen, it rotates automatically. So are you reading a long document or buried in an Excel sheet of endless rows? Just flip. So a normal monitor if you have the space, a monitor on a swivel arm if you have the desk but not the space, or a portable monitor if you neither have a desk nor the space, or go all in with all three. Before we move on from monitors, just to give you an idea about sizes, because, well, at least with monitors, size does 
matter. So this is my 13.3 inch MacBook Pro. This is a 27 inch monitor. This is a 24 inch monitor. And this is the 15.4 inch portable monitor. Now, of course, you can go below 24 inch and get a 21 inch monitor or above 27 inch and get a 32 inch monitor. But for most cases, I would recommend you stick between 24 and 27 inch unless you really like your monitors huge or you really don't have space for a 24 inch monitor. But for me personally, I find it most comfortable to work on a 24 or 27 inch monitor. So what do you do after you get a second monitor? Well, I would get a keyboard and a mouse, ideally wireless because I hate them cords. Or if you're using a Mac, a trackpad as well. I have here Apple's Magic Keyboard 2, Magic Trackpad and Magic Mouse. There's plenty of debate about these. Some people hate them, some people love them. I personally like them. And I use both the trackpad and the mouse. The trackpad sometimes for video editing, for example, or some quick Photoshop work, and the mouse for other things. But I also have the Logitech MX Master 2S mouse, which I use with Windows primarily, and it's a great mouse. Very comfortable, rechargeable battery, horizontal scrolling, a ton of gesture controls, which you can configure. For example, you press this, swipe up, left, down, right, and you can configure each gesture to perform an action like volume control, opening an application, closing a window, etc., etc. It works on any surface, including glass, and it comes with Logitech's unifying receiver, but it also has Bluetooth, so you can connect it without a dongle. It has Logitech's hyper-efficient scrolling, which unlocks the scrolling wheel when you want to scroll through large documents. This is a pretty neat feature. And it can also connect to up to three computers at the same time. You simply switch between them by pressing these buttons. If you do a lot of number crunching, you can get a keyboard with a number pad or an external number pad. This one is designed to look like an Apple product, but the moment you touch it, you realize it is in no way an Apple product. Having an external keyboard and mouse lets you step back from your laptop, position it wherever you want and work more comfortably with both screens. Which brings me to my next recommendation, a laptop stand. This allows you to elevate your laptop and effectively your screen to a more comfortable viewing angle and more importantly, a healthier one for your posture. This is an example of a laptop stand that is both height and angle adjustable. But again, if you are short on space, you can get something more portable like this thing. This folds up nicely so it's portable and you can travel with it as well and sets up easily to lift off your laptop. For the next level upgrade, I would recommend you get a docking station. With a docking station, you can connect all sorts of things to your laptop, all with one cable. Here I have the Dell WD-15, which lets me connect a VGA monitor, an HDMI monitor, my portable monitor via USB, a LAN cable for a faster Ethernet connection, my USB dongles for my headsets, and an iPhone charging cable, and a power adapter. And what's great about having a docking station is that all of these connect to your laptop with a single USB-C cable. That is, of course, if your laptop supports it. That cable passes through video to your screens, passes power to your laptop to charge it, and expands your ports to give you multiple USB ports, Ethernet, etc. The beauty of it, if you want to grab your laptop and sit on a couch, well, it's just one cable you unplug. Back on your desk, just plug one cable back in and you're connected to all your screens and peripherals. Again, if space and portability is a concern, you can get a USB-C hub that does more or less the same, but with, of course, much more limited capacity. I have the Satichi, 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 ah, yeah, names are not my forte today. I have this USB hub. It gives me two USB ports, HDMI and power. So I don't have all the benefits of the docking station, but it lets me connect a screen to USBs and pass through power to charge my MacBook. There are hubs that have Ethernet ports, SD card slots, etc. So you can find one that fits your needs. And well, lastly, I would recommend you invest in a decent pair of headsets. It would give you some privacy you won't bother others around you, but also laptop mics are generally aren't that great. A headset, especially one designed for calls, would reduce the background noise to some degree. 
course, if your kids decided to sing at the top of their lungs, it won't magically erase that, but it still helps. I did a review on the Bose 700UC and the Jabra Evolve 285, both highly recommended. You can check out the review up here and the links are in the description as well. So that's it folks, my thoughts on upgrading your home office setup. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask as always. If you like this video, please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more of my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. This encourages me to continue producing such content. Until next time, cheers.